Okay. It's uh, new time. Let's start. So we got some wires. Okay, but these are really exciting wires. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's asked for this, and I finally found a place that makes some good ribbon cables that are made with silicone covered wires. So people who really like our silicone wires, and y'all all do, because if you've used these silicone wires after using PVC wires, you're never going to go back. We now have them in ribbon format. So, so we've got, go through the different yeah, ones? you just go through them. We basically okay. have a bunch of um, four wire and 26, 28, and 30 gauge. And then we also, I think it's the 28 gauge that we have 10 wires. And I'll show, uh, I'll show one under the. Uh, yeah, so here, these are just a bunch. I mean, they're just a bunch. They all look kind of the same, but they're one meter long. They're silicone. They're super, uh, you know, squishy and flexible. And you know you can solder to them without the, um, the sheathing uh, peeling back or melting or getting damaged. Um, the the 30 gauge in particular is excellent for wearables where you want to pass like a NeoPixel um, or dot star signal around. You know we had to pick like how many wires do you want, and it's just a trade off between you know price and, and and number of wires. We thought four is a good range, so. So this is, you know, the ribbon, and this is, I think, the 26 gauge. And of course, you can uh, peel them apart very easily, and then um, strip the wires. Uh, so this is, I think, the 26, and then this is the 28. So you can see there is there is a difference between the thicker and the thinner. And then let me grab the 30. I think the 30 is going to be the most popular, but. Um, this is the and this is the uh, 28 gauge, 10 wire. So you only got one strip with um, 10 wires on it. And of course, you can like peel this into like two or three or whatever number of wires you want. And then finally, um, this is the 30 gauge, which is like just super nice. It's this very thin ribbon. It's it's very flexible, and of course, you can peel the wires off if necessary um, for whatever project. So I think this will be popular. Um, you know, instead of having multiple uh, silicone wires, you could just have this ribbon, and then uh, pin one is marked with a white dash. Okay. That's the more silicone wires. ribbon wires. More wires. Okay, more wires coming your way. We now have also some JST cables. Um, these are just handy because we see a lot of boards have a JST three pin connector, and we wanted to um, have a cable that plugs into it. We thought in particular that these were useful for people who had the Halloween uh, JP's going to do a project that shows plugging these cables into the ports on the Halloween and then connecting that to uh, a sensor or LEDs or whatever. And likewise, coming soon, we have um, a NeoPixel strip as well okay. that has, so. yeah, I mean, they're kind of all the same because they all plug into the same port. So this is a, a 30 LED, half meter long NeoPixel strip with a JST connector on the end. And um, I'll show this with a Halloween to demonstrate how all these are supposed to work. Because what's nice is it's, it's supposed to be plug and play. I wanted to make the Halloween really easy to use. So um, you've got these ports on the side, and this one says NeoPixel. And you just plug this in, and like you're done. Like there's no wiring, there's no soldering, there's, no, there's not even alligator clips. And then if you want to connect a sensor or something to the other port, um, you can plug that in here. And then now you've got power, ground, and signal. So you just very, plug those into the pins. Huh? Just put those right into the pins. Yeah, you just plug these in. So Super easy. Socket and uh, male. So you can do this for a breadboard or something with female sockets. And this, of course, you can you can plug something directly in if you have like a temperature sensor or a potentiometer. And this is a NeoPixel, so you can just NeoPixel it up. So a very easy way to update your little Halloween badge with some accessories. And I think as we do other boards that we want to make really simple, we'll just keep the same pin out so you can cross use all the components uh, from one to the other. Okay, next up. Um, this is some more robotic stuff. This one, I gotta admit, this is not the most perfect thing. Usually when I stock up something, it's like awesome and perfect. This one's a little odd. It's a clip on for TT Motors that's Lego compatible, but the weird thing about it is it has bumps on both sides. That said, it does work with Lego, and like I built this wall and I, I plugged this in, and uh, it's now a TT motor with this little clip on it. These are screws that you can make to permanently attach it, but I didn't leave this on. And then you can um, connect it onto this like wall that I made out of some Lego pieces. So the only thing that's unusual is that there's bumps on both sides. Again, I don't know why they designed it this way, and I think uh, if I had it, say in the design, I would have had bumps on one side and then 
you know, holes on the other. We might just make our own version, but until then, this is what we got. So this is kind of the closest I could find to a, a TT motor Lego adapter. Um, we also have the adapter separately that plugs into TT motors that turns it into a t uh, Lego axle for use with Lego Technics. So between these two things, maybe, you know, it can it uncover some projects that people have been wanting to build. I think, you know, it, it, this is an inexpensive uh, addition. So uh, as long as you're aware that it's got bumps on both sides and you're, you go on at it with open eyes, this could be a very useful robotics addition. Okay. Next up. This is a very eccentric product. This is an eccentric wheel. Um, we've had a lot of wheels for TT motors or these, these gearbox motors that are symmetric. They're wheels and they go round and round all the way perfectly circularly. Uh, and this is, um, just looks like what it is. It's a little add-on with slots in it and it doesn't rotate symmetrically. It's like a cam or an eccentric motion uh, device. Um, useful for some cam projects. Whenever you have motion, maybe you want to have something that does is not symmetric. It, it's unusual to find these, so I thought I'd pick one up, and uh, maybe you'll find it useful for your project. So we're kind of getting into the weirder yeah. robotics and electronic parts now. Next up. Next up, an electromagnet. So we're, we have a couple different sizes, and this is the first one. Um, we did a couple electromagnet projects with Cricut as we were designing it, and I was like, you know what? It is actually pretty hard to find uh, electromagnets that are you know five volt and, and easy to use. Um, so this is a five volt electromagnet. I just want to give one warning. Electromagnets are specced with um, kilogram uh, holding force. So I think this is a 2.5 kilogram holding force. It's not printed on it, but it's, it's printed on the bag. Um, that is not the amount it lifts. The amount that it lifts is like 1 15th of that. I'm not exactly sure how they come up with the holding force. Maybe that's like, in a frictionless, non-gravity environment, I don't know, there's there's some magical way that they came up with this number, but there's absolutely no way this is gonna lift uh, 2.5 kilograms, but it will lift, you know, whatever. Uh, this yeah, one wedge. thing, I was um, building a marble lifter and it, um, it was possible, it just wasn't gonna be good for beginners. And then we started sampling the electromagnets. The video's up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And I was able to pick up one of the little metal pachinko balls, bring that to the top of the uh, the maze. It depends it on, down. yeah, it depends on the size and, and the shape of the item as well. So now I'm, I'm powering it. It's of course electromagnet. It's using current and you can't hear anything, but um, now it can, it can lift up stuff uh, quite easily. And then if I release the current, bam, very loud uh, thing drops. So you can use it to pick up and lift. Is there a current rating for the electromagnet? There is, and I don't remember it. It's, I think this is about 200 milliamps. It's on the product page. Um, oh yeah, so in 20.22. Yeah, it's about, it's about 200, 220 milliamps, it's five volts. Um, we'll have a couple different sizes for different weights, but it's like, you can PWM, but it doesn't really work. You pretty much use electromagnet either on or off. Yep. Um, you just treat it like a motor, it's a coil, so you will need a motor driver, even though it's not moving. It still has the inductive uh, you know, kickback because it's a, it's a coil of wire around a, a piece of metal. That's how electromagnets are made. Okay, next up. Next up, they have this very unusual motor. Um, but I've seen these around. They're, they're, it's, I don't know what it's for. I think it's for a toy of some sort. It's a pager-sized motor with a gear, and then this like triangular piece attached with a spring, and it's a spring-back motor. Um, you can remove the spring, and it's a normal turning. You know, here I showed it on, turning on and off. It is a normal geared down motor, but it's just kind of an unusual shape and size. So I thought this would be interesting for people to use. And I'll also show it on the overhead because it's it's quite small. They're low cost. Uh, they're rated for three volts. Uh, you can drive at five, but you know just be careful because you have to drive at fifty percent duty cycle, or you'll uh, you could damage it. Uh, they will melt, as I determined, if I if you drive them at like five volts for forever. Um, so this is it with um, the plastic piece off and then inside here, so this is the pager motor. So it's a very small motor. It's got nice long wires, which I, which I like. At least they got that going on. And then in here's a gearbox. Um, and then it's, there's a gear. And it's actually quite strong. It's geared down, I guess I should probably figure out what it is, but it's probably about 100, 100 times or so. Um, it's geared down and um, it's got little uh, kind of a clover leaf shaped um, axle so you can connect stuff to it and then 
this is the version as it ships without removing the plastic piece. So what's interesting about this is it's got um, this plastic piece that moves about 60 degrees in this direction, or this 60 degrees in this direction, and there's a spring back. So this is, this spring will, if you let go of the power, it'll eventually go back to center. So it's a self-centering motor. And um, it's designed so even if you're driving it at three volts, you don't want to do it forever, but if you drive it, it will stop here and it's not going to, you know, melt, it'll stall but it won't damage itself. And so it's kind of interesting to use, maybe if there's if there's something where you would normally use a servo, but maybe you want something lower cost and you just want to move back and forth, or maybe you want something with, with pretty high torque, or maybe you just want a very small rotating thing. I don't know. This, yeah. this motor kind of... It, it's, for puppetry, for all sorts of organic-y, for art projects, this is really good. Yeah, it's also, it's, it's extremely small. I mean, yeah. compared to most motors, this is a very tiny little device so and it's low current so i thought this yeah, is kind of interesting steer things yeah, yeah. i think it, I, I don't know what it's for i imagine it's for some toy or some small electronic device or yeah. something but i liked it i like this little motor it's it sang to me miniature sprinklers each to each okay next up uh, as a simple this is our uh, htu 21 df humidity temperature sensor you know and love it well uh, we've had requests for having this pre-soldered so you can just plug it into a breadboard and this is what you got. So you can just plug it in, use our Arduino or Circuit Python, Python libraries we just talked about earlier, and you've got a really great uh, humidity temperature sensor. You notice that this sensor has that little white Teflon on the top. Um, it's got a filter on it, so it's a little higher quality um, than most low cost humidity sensors. It also means you won't, won't get dirty. Um, some sensors have an open port and then dust can get in them, but with this one, it's got a Teflon cover on it, so it's a, it's a nice sensor, I like it. Okay. And start of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, and the Adafruit community. Plug it in. Turn it around. Bam. Bam. 32 by 32. Um, so we had our RGB matrix shield that we brought out a couple weeks ago, and people were like, hey, you know, you should have like a feather wing. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. So um, this is a feather wing for our M0 and M4 feathers um, that will let you plug in directly uh, an RGB matrix. You can, I showed it here with the 32 by 32, but you can use it by 32 by 64 or 16 by 32. And here's the thing, you can actually build it two ways. So you can see this way, um, you can plug in the cable on the top. I'll show this over on the, over, oh, on the overhead as yeah. well. Um, but you, we, you comes bare and you get the pieces to build it two ways, either so it plugs in the back or it um, uses a cable. So you have two choices of how you want to assemble it. Um, and it's what I thought kind of made this pretty sweet design. So let me bring this out here. Zoom in. Go focus. Okay. So this is um, one way you can build it where you build it on the bottom. So you put uh, female headers on the feather wing. Hold on. This is tougher to remove. So many headers. Okay, so you, you can build it like this with female headers on the top here, and then we give you this 2x10 connector. And the reason it's 2x10, not 2x8, is so that you can't put it in wrong. It'll fit perfectly into this connector um, and center itself. Otherwise, it can be off center, which, which I really drives me crazy. Um, and then you can power the matrix through this terminal block here, and then you put 5 volts in here. There's polarity protection and a 3 volt regulator. So you don't have to power the feather separately. So you plug in the feather, and then you plug in the power. So you can see it's got five volt two amps. And then all you have to do is find the, the input port, and then line up the input. Hold on, turn this around. You plug it in, and then it's working. So that's easy. So what's nice is like, you know, this way, um, you have a single cable, and you don't have to have anything else. There's no, you know, cable to this thing. And then, of course, you can chain more uh, um, uh, matrices if you want. Or the other way you can assemble this is um, this style, which, uh, which is in the photo where you have this socket um, cable plug in on the top, and then you have the feather wing plug in on the side. So you can have the cable come out the top, like shown here, or you can plug it in on the back. So you get the pieces you choose. You are the decider. You decide. You decide. Um, do you want to mention it's for the M0 and M4 feathers only? It'll never work on our 32U4 feathers. They're way too slow. Um, it could possibly work on our NRF52 feathers and Wicked and Teensy. I just, 
we don't have the code written and ready, um, but if you are someone who uh, is excited to go through and just make sure that all the pinouts work and what library to use for those platforms, we're a SAMD21, SAMD51 house here. We love those. So for now, I'm just going to say, hey, you know, other platforms, ESP32, you're on your own. You'll have to match the pinout to whatever library you can find that's been written. But M0 and M4 work great. And uh, we've got excellent code for them that's very fast and mm -hmm. looks perfect. So this is an excellent way to add uh, our feather wings, our feathers. And of course, you can add more feather wings if you like. If you want to display sensor data, you can have the sensor data connected. You can use our Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uh, feathers because the SPI and I2C pins are available. Um, we kind of made it so it doesn't use all the most useful pins. And uh, that's the new products. And with that, new products. So many.